Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Cooper's Amputee Lifestyle, where I am an amputee scuba diver, and I'm diving to combat PTSD and depression due to the traumatic loss of my leg. And on today's adventures, we are going to be down here in Cosmo, Mexico. We're going to be just west of the Cozumel Island, and we're going to be diving on a shipwreck. While we are touring this shipwreck, I'm going to narrate to you about this shipwreck. This is the C-53 shipwreck down here in Cozumel, Mexico. The C-53 was built in Tampa in 1944 at Wilson Marine Shipworks. It was built as a minesweeper for the service during World War II, named under scuffles. The C-53 is 184 feet long, 33 feet wide. It was sunk to the bottom of the Caribbean, perfectly upright, it rests on the seabed in 70 feet from the surface. The shipwreck stands 40 feet from the seabed, permitting divers to reach the wreck by descending just 30 feet from the surface. C-53 wreck, originally named Scuffle, is a minesweeper. It sailed from San Francisco out to Hawaii in July of 1944. Operating out of Pearl Harbor, she swept an old American laid minefield in French frigate Shoals in August, escorted a convoy to Inuitok and carried out various tests and training operations. She arrived at San Pedro Bay, Leyte, and on December of 1944, joined a mine division. With her division, Scuffle participated in pre-invasion sweeps at Lingyayen Gulf in January of 1945, and also Zambales and Subic Bay. In each instance, after completing the pre-invasion sweeps, she helped extend and clear areas during and after the initial troop landings and provided anti-submarine and anti-aircraft protection for the transports. In February of 1945, her division began pre-invasion sweeps in Manila Bay in preparations for the landings at Marvelas and Corregidor while operating off Corregidor the minesweepers came within 5,000 yards of the island and were repeatedly straddled by Japanese fire before supporting ships silenced the enemy's guns. Scuffle continued sweeping in Manila Bay throughout February, and her unit earned a Navy unit commendation for her operation. Towards the end of February, Scuffle re-entered Manila Bay to help clear the of mines and submerged wrecks. Her force, plus the salvage ship cable, accomplished the task almost by mid-April, sweeping 615 square miles of water and opening the harbor to supply ships. Towards the end of April, she rejoined the mine division. And in an eight-day sweep of Sulu Sea of Palawan, in May, the minesweeper arrived at Moratai to prepare for operations in the Netherlands and East Indies. Our dive guide Julen is pointing at the holes in the C-53 wreck scuffles. This is where they originally blew up the sides of the ship to help sink it in its current position right now. Well, this looks like somebody just lost their hat. So I'm just going to grab this hat, pick it up, and I'll give it to the boat operators and hopefully they can get it back to its original owner. It looks like a nice hat, but sadly, I don't think it will fit me. Well, let's get back to our story. In early June, Scuffle sailed for Moratai with her division to carry out pre-invasion sweeps in Brunei Bay. She ran around a reef a week later, damaging her screw, but was able to carry out her assigned sweeps before sailing on in mid-June to Subic Bay for repairs. She rejoined her division in the end of June. It was off Balakpan and provided support performing the pre-invasion sweep. She left Balakpan in July and returned to Subic Bay for a month of overhaul. Scuffle's task group received a presidential unit citation for its service off Balakpan. The minesweeper left the Philippines on September 6th and arrived at Sasebo, Japan 
on the 20th of October after weathering three typhoons while en route. She helped sweep the Japanese minefields in Tsushima Strait and Ryukyu Islands until sailing from Sasporo home in the 9th of December. Arriving at Orange, Texas on the 2nd of April 1946, she was decommissioned there on the 19th of June in 1946 and placed in reserve. The ship was reclassified MSF-298 effective the 7th of February 1955. She was struck from the Navy list on the 1st of May 1962 and transferred to Mexico on the 1st of October 1962. Scuffle received five battle stars for her World War II service. In 1962, the Mexican Navy purchased Scuffle and converted her to an Admiral class gunboat and gave her a new name, Leap C-53. From 1962 to 1999, she patrolled the Gulf of Mexico and the Mexican Caribbean Sea, serving in rescue missions, patrolling for illegal drugs, and illegal firearms. After 55 years of service, C-53 Scuffles was decommissioned and later donated to the Cozumel Underwater Park. It was sunk in Cozumel June of 2000. The location chosen for the wreck is just offshore of Park. The site was selected for many reasons including easy access for divers in an area sheltered from strong currents. It was logged on a big sandbar where the ship will not cause any damage to the, any existing reef surfaces. The inspiration of sinking the C-53 as an artificial reef and dive attraction was designed and carried on by the Cosmo Water Sports and Tourism Association in collaboration with local dive shops, as well as the Parque Marino Arrecifes de Cozumel. Inspiration came from another place where ships had been successfully sunk by and for divers, Canada. This project started in 1998 at a DEMA show. Canadians were making artificial reefs for their diving areas by getting old boats from the government cleaning and preparing them for sinking and then diving them. This inspired Cozumel to do the same. The plan behind its sinking was to create an alternate site to help divers go to to help the traffic on nearby reefs. This dive site, the C-53, is a great dive site to explore. It's very easy it's got a lot of large openings for penetrating the wreck. The site is also known to have some occasional strong currents, making it sometimes a little challenging to navigate. It has easy access from all sides, and it's at a depth that can be dove as a first or second dive. Some marine life that you may encounter while diving here. Inside you may see a giant green moray eel, glassy sweepers, and depending on the season, shoals and sardines. Sponges and corals are starting to form thick colonies on the metal of the wreck. And if you look carefully for tiny blennies and starfish or cleaner ship for your macro opportunities. The exterior of the wreck remains relatively clean, likely due to the constant currents. But if boasts a great variety of marine life and sponges, large schools of barracuda are frequent the site with groupers, more eels, and a wide variety of other fish. There's Jewel in our dive guide. Looks like he's a buoyancy master. Let's continue on. All of the resources that I have used to narrate this video will be listed in the description below for any of you to click on and read and enjoy. Now let's continue checking out the ship and exploring it and I'll narrate what we are seeing. Quite a few divers on this wreck. It's a busy day down here in Cosmo, Mexico. There's some really good clear waters. I would say the visibility is well over 100 feet biz. Nice blue waters, a lot of variety of life on the ship inside and out. On this particular day, on the port side of the ship, there wasn't very much current, 
But as we came around the front of the ship and started going back on the starboard side, there was a great deal of current. It wasn't too bad once you end up just getting way around a corner or inside the ship. A little bit of a break from the current where you can actually just take it easy and enjoy the view and the marine life. So this fish right here is a sand diver. They're typically 10 to 35 centimeters in length. Here we have a couple of little trumpet fish just hanging out inside these little areas where there's little sponges and coral. Here's a pretty decent sized basket sponge that has just decided to grow right here. These fish right here are called, these are pretty amazing. Great color and contrast the way the yellow and the black and a little bit of white silver shining these are pretty cool they are just kind of hanging out eating typically their size is about 15 to 25 centimeters in length it's hard to see this little guy but he might be one of those little sharp nose buffers pretty interesting just kind of hanging out. Here's a view of the C-53 just looking out towards the back end of the ship. Nice blue water. Looks pretty amazing. The water's so clear as you look up at the surface. You can just see the ripples of the water. It just moves along the current. We're just going to head towards the front of the ship now and just getting towards the end of our dive. There's Julian and a few of the divers from our group. He's just asking me how much air I have right now. Seems like some divers are just kind of hanging out in front of the boat. This is uh, probably, I would imagine, where they would mount a gun to help fight during the war on this little circle that, that you see with the little brace and frame. Here's the wheelhouse. We're going to go up and take a closer look inside. If you haven't already, make sure you have liked the video you're subscribed to my channel you have the bell notification hit so you can be up to date on all my videos and if you would like to you can also help support the channel by becoming a member or click on the little heart thanks and that all goes back to the channel in the form of equipment you have camera equipment and uh, air and repairs on uh, current equipment it all goes right back into the channel to help bring you content and improving and better content. So this is inside the wheelhouse right now where they uh, control, steer the ship. Uh, there's the portholes we're kind of looking through and uh, checking out the divers through all these portholes. This is kind of an area where we're just kind of meeting back up because we're going to uh, end up starting our ascent soon. Julian is gonna inflate his SMB and then we're gonna follow it, do our safety stop, and then ascend to the surface and get back on the boat. The dive company is Dressel Divers, right here, Cosmo, Mexico, at the Ibero Star Resort. Great place to stay at, great dive shop, right on the resort. I highly recommend Ibero Star and Dressel Divers. I will also put their links in the description below in case you want to look it up and book a trip. So that's going to wrap up another episode of Cooper's Amputee Lifestyle. I want to chase my dreams, hobbies, and adventures and inspire you to do the same to fight any depression or PTSD that you might have. Please follow me on my future episodes and feel free to watch any of the older episodes. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for your support. I love you all. We will see you on the next adventure. This was the C-53 dive wreck down here in Cozumel, Mexico. Get down there and check it out. It's an amazing dive. Thank you. And don't forget to click on the next video at the end of this video to help the algorithm. Thank you.